In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that you have given us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time that we have gathered over here to spend with your word, Lord, as we have gathered over here today. You teach us, O oh Lord, you reveal to us the secrets and the mysteries of your kingdom. Lord, let it be everything of you spoken to us and nothing of our own knowledge, O oh Lord. Lord, it is your word which is setting us free. And right now, as we have gathered over here, it is by your word today, we are able to see ourselves in that place of prosperity. We are able to live in that place of success and of victory. And Lord, we believe, oh Lord, that through your word, we are anointed. Through your word, we are blessed. And because of what you have done for us on the cross, we are able to walk in the prosperity and the success, and we are able to walk in fullness of life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this time that we are spending with your word. And Lord, as we are spending this time with your word, Lord, it is by your spirit, through your power, with your anointing, that Lord, this teaching, Lord, we are able to understand because it is the Holy Spirit who's making this teaching extremely simple and easy. And by your Spirit, O oh Lord, we are anointed to walk in the fullness of God, to walk in that place of prosperity and success. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the word that sets us free. And Lord, because of this word that you have given to us, Lord, this word is what is changing our life completely, changing it from one form to the other form, O oh Lord, to the way that you want us to live. Lord, we believe, O oh Lord, that we are able to do your will and your purpose in this world, that we are able to do what you have called us to do, that we are able to live the way you have called us to live, and that, Lord, we are able to walk the way you have called us to walk in life, walk in, walking in love with one another, operating in humility for one another. And Lord, we bind every spirit of distraction that is distracting us from your word. We approve the spirit, we curse it, and we cast it out of our life in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we lose that we are anointed and we are successful. We are prosperous and we are victorious. And because of your word, today we are able to see ourselves in that place of prosperity and success and in that place of faith-filled faith imaginations which lead us away from every fearful word. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, our Father. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. So, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So, um, we are continuing from what we were seeing on... Um, on Friday, yeah, last Friday, uh, we were seeing based on 1 Thessalonians, uh, 1, 1 Thessalonians 4, 9 to 12, and that those who trust in the Lord, they lack no good thing. Okay, let's go there, 1 Thessalonians. Praise the God. One Thessalonians, uh, what happened? Four, verse number nine, twelve. We read it from message. Okay, praise God. So see that, um, what he's saying. Regarding life together and getting along with each other, you don't need me to tell you what to do. You have got taught in these matters. 
just love one another you are already good at it your friends all over the province of macedonia are the evidence keep it up get better and better at it stay calm mind your own business do your own job you heard all this from us before but a reminder never hurts we want you living in a way that will command the respect of outsiders not lying around sponging of your friends now here he is saying he starts off with saying we saw this on a, on a friday okay what he starts saying he starts saying regarding life together and getting along with each other so on friday we were seeing that word what is trying to say regarding life together and getting along with each other now uh, according to the scriptures we saw the love of god for us and the love of god for us is beyond our expectation god loved you even before you knew that he loved you god loved you even though you were sinner even though we were sinners god loved us and there are so many uh, scriptures that speak about the love of god you see the whole bible is based on how much god loves you and the reason why i'm saying that is because god loves us in such an extent where uh, the way he loved us was not the way we expected him to because as we have committed sin we are sinners okay but him even though we were sinners to come and die for us was something that we did not expect and that's what he's saying here he's saying regarding life together and getting along with each other you don't need me to tell you what to do you are god taught in these matters just love one another means what just like how god loved you and god taught and that your god taught means god taught you how to love you love in the same way praise god now we are never supposed to allow any word which is contradicting to god's word to remain in us because that will always lead us to fear any word that is not in alignment with the word of god will lead us to fear okay and that's why it is extremely important the bible says in um, 1 peter 5:8 let me say that scripture 1 peter 5:8 Hallelujah. And we'll read it from KJ. Praise God. See that, what he's saying. Be sober, be vigilant. because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour now does anyone know how does the devil devour what tool does he use to devour fear 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 is the tool that the devil uses to devour now when he is walking about as a roaring lion means like a roaring lion now according to the scripture the devil is not a roaring lion but he is like one now he is going about walking about seeking whom he may devour that means what he is seeking who is ready to operate in fear because a person who is operating in fear now that person in other words is giving acceptance for the devil now when you are shopping at a store okay and when you have a card a card a uh, credit card debit card whatever card to pay okay and there there is a person behind you also waiting to uh, pay will you just say to that person you can have my card i don't want it anymore you can keep it will you say that that foolishness correct yes but even though it's foolishness that's what we many times do when uh, when we are seeing what the word of god says when we are seeing that the bible says operate in love operate in 
uh, faith operate with in in belief with God. What we do, we allow fear. You know what we are doing with the fear? We are saying, "There you go, devil. You can have the authority." See, the devil is powerless. Once Jesus came on the cross and he died, uh, the devil is powerless. And how do we know he's powerless? Because the devil doesn't use his power to attack. The devil uses your own power against you. I'll repeat that once again. The devil is powerless. He doesn't have any power. And that's why he doesn't try to attack. See, see for example, when Adam and Eve were there in the Garden of Eden, God did not come, tell, God did not come and tell Adam, uh, or, or God did not come and tell Eve, go kill Adam. Right? Did he, did, did, did he um, say that? No. Why? Because the devil did not act, attack with any other thing, but he attacks with fear. And, and, and that's a very good advantage for us. Why? Because whenever I want to understand God's voice, whether it is God speaking to me or the devil speaking to me, the way to understand is, is it controlled by fear or by faith? If it is controlled by faith, it comes from God. If it's controlled by fear, it comes from the devil. And that's how we know. Because the devil will not attack any other way except fear. Fear. And that's what the devil attacked Adam and Eve. And after they ate the fruit, what did they say to, Adam, to God? I am afraid. What was that? Fear. The devil uses fear. Whenever he tries to attack, he uses fear. And because of that, he's saying, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. So the devil is walking around, looking at you, whether you're ready to operate in fear. And that's why he's saying, be vigilant, be sober, be ready. Be alert. Don't allow fear to rule you. Otherwise, the devil will devour you. If we are governed by fear, and if fear is controlling our lives, if fear is taking the control of our life, and if we are walking in the fear, okay, that means the devil has got a 100% point access point to attack in my life. Praise God. Okay, now we see this fear. Now, how do you cast out fear? How does fear get cast out? How do you cast out fear? How do we cast out fear? Anyone? How do we cast out fear? Okay. The answer is in 1 Thessalonians 4, 9 to 12, what we were seeing. But let me show you another scripture also to this. One John. See, that was number 18. 1 John 4, 18. This is in 1 Thessalonians 4, 9 to 12. And there is this one word answer. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. What casts out fear? Perfect love. What did he say in 1 Thessalonians 4, 9 to 12? Just love one another. Now, for you to understand or uh, for you to love one another, it is only when you understand that God loves you. For us to love one another, for us to love those around us, for us to love each other. The only way to do that is to understand how much God loves you, how much God loves us. And now when we come to the understanding of how much God loves us, that is when we will be able to love one another. And that's when 1 John 4, 18 comes to pass. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. He that fear it is not made perfect in love. Now, so does love cast out fear? 
Does love cast out fear? No. No. Love does not cast out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Now, what's the difference? What's the difference? If I am operating in the love of the world, and a conditional love, love based on a condition, loving just uh, loving based on emotion. If I'm loving in that way, that fear will be even more. But perfect love means the love of the perfect love is the love of Christ that is put in us. The love where we are able to love one another with the unconditional love of God that is enabling us to operate in compassion, operate in mercy, operate in forgiveness. That love, that perfect love is what casts out every fear because there is no fear in love. So if the devil tries to attack you with fear, when he's saying be sober, be vigilant, what is he saying? Be sober, be alert, understand God's love. Because when the devil is roaming around, seeking, uh, walking around, seeking whom he may devour, and when you are absolutely vigilant, when you are absolutely sober, when you are ready, when you are ready, you are understanding God's love, you are operating in God's love, now the devil is tormented because fear has torment. Now, if, we, if fear has torment, that means when I'm operating in the love of God, that means fear is tormented. In other words, when I'm operating in the love of God, the devil is tormented. Praise God. And that's why we have to be made perfect in love. And, and see, the only way we are made perfect in love. Anyone knows how we are made perfect in love? Praise God. Can you put your videos on? Jahaya, Sian, can you put your videos on? Okay, Jahaya has put Sian, can you put your video on? So that we can see, I can see you all. Praise God. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Okay. Now, he's saying, he that fears not is made perfect in love. Now, how is a person made perfect in love? Um, when he understands, uh, like God's love for me. For him. Okay. 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 Correct. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. Yeah. Right. Right. Your answer is not wrong. Your answer is right. Now, when a person, a person can be made perfect in love only when he understands how much God loves him. In other words, the answer was right in front of you. He that feareth not, fears not. Is made. Uh, see, he's saying he that fear is made perfect in love. So he that's not fear is made perfect in love. So a person who does not fear is the one who's made perfect in love. So who's a person who does not fear? As Sian was saying, a person who does not fear is a person who understands God's love for him. Now a person who's not fearing, but a person who understands God's love for him is when he is made perfect in love. Now the Bible says faith works through love. What does that mean? Faith works through love. Faith works through love. What does it mean? The more I love others and the more I love God is what makes my faith work. Correct? Correct? The no. Then what, then what does it mean? Faith works through love. Galatians 5, 6. What does it mean? Is it, it means... the more I love God? So the more, that's what I said. The more I, the more I start loving others and the more I start loving God is what is going to make my faith work. Right? No. no. What does it mean? Yeah, Sia, you said yes? You agree? No, I said no. Oh, okay. I, I, don't, I didn't hear what you said. Okay. So what does it mean? Faith works through love. Um, well, how I put it uh, is like, um, well, praise God. How do I explain? Uh, <laughs> like whatever um, I'm doing, I'm, oh gosh. Uh, 
I'm operating basically uh, how Christ loves me. Like uh, operating. So okay, never mind. I can't explain it properly. Okay. Praise so God. you said you're operating in the way Christ loves you, right? So that means just the way Christ loves you, you're loving others, and that's what makes your faith work, right? I'm confused. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Okay. Now, I was thinking, uh, the, the, uh, for a long time, I was thinking, faith through love means the more I love God and the more others is what makes my faith work. But that is not the answer. The more, it's not about, see, that comes secondary. Your love towards others and your love towards God comes secondary. First comes God, how much he loves you. So what does it mean by faith work through love? The simple meaning of that means the more I understand how much God loves me is what makes my faith work. Very simply. That's what it means. The more I understand how much God loves me and what he has done for me and that he did it not because I asked him to, but out of his love for me and out of his willingness, he has given us the grace. When I understand that, that's when my faith works. Is that also grace? Yeah. Yes. Because under, because God's love for us is like a part of grace. Because when Jesus came and died, he came and died out of God's love. He said, uh, for God so loved the world that he came, his only begotten, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now what, see, whatever Jesus did is grace. In other words, how do I recognize whether it's grace or not? If it came from God, from God, if it came from God to us through Jesus, it is grace. For example, when the Bible says that by the wounds of Jesus I'm healed, that healing came from God to us through Jesus Christ. And that's what makes it grace. That healing is grace. So whatever Jesus did on the cross, that God sent him out of his love for me, whatever Jesus did on the cross was grace. And that's the love of God. So that we have. So see, for example, when Jesus healed us, Jesus by his wounds, we are healed. Now, out of God's love, he sent him to heal uh, or to, to, to heal us so that we are already healed to take our sickness. And that is the reason why we have the grace. And the grace is that I am already healed. So yes, the uh, love of God is a part of um, grace. Yes, praise God. I have a question. Praise God. Yeah. How do I activate that grace? Is it through faith? Yeah, through faith. Uh, the answer is in Ephesians 2. Let me show you. Through faith, through believing. Ephesians 2. But like maintaining that grace is through faith right yeah through faith through believing okay same thing yeah because i always thought that um grace is you know when i didn't do anything but it just happened praise god like for example getting a job grace of god yeah yeah, yeah that's right see see okay you got confused okay see yes uh, for example if god is uh, giving you something See, see, let's say a person is having a sickness. Example, a person is having a sickness. He's having le a, a, a leg issue. Okay, so he's struggling to walk. He has leg pain and all of that. Leg pain. Okay, so he's struggling to walk. Now, the Bible says, by the wounds of Jesus, I'm healed. Now, grace is what he did. Okay, always remember that. Grace is what he did. Just now I told you it came from God. It's not what you did, it's what God did. So when the scripture says, by the wounds of Jesus, I'm healed, the healing came from man or the healing came from God? God. From God. So that means it is grace because by the wounds yes. of Jesus, I am healed. Now that means it is grace. So the if a person is having a leg pain, okay, and he is confessing the scripture, he is speaking what? Grace. Grace. But isn't he speaking faith? No, see, see, he's speaking what grace has done. Okay. Because what grace has done is by the wounds of Jesus, he is healed. So, in other words, he is speaking. Okay. 
he is speaking for the word of God says. Now, when he is speaking the grace, what, what Jesus has done, when he's saying by the wounds of Jesus, I mean, you, you said, you, you, you asked the question, he's speaking faith. It only happens, a person can only speak faith when the grace of God has been given. Yes, by God, from God's part, it's been done. The grace of God has been given. But now the next step is that he takes and he says, Lord, you have done it on the cross for me. And Lord, I believe it, that you have done it and that I'm no longer sick, but I'm healed. Now that step of believing is when his confession is now turned to faith. Believing it's already been done. So grace was what God did. What did See, if a person does not have faith, if the person is not operating in faith, but he's speaking the word of God, what Jesus did means he's speaking grace. But once this grace, he is mixing it with faith, that's when he's speaking his faith. And that's when the manifestation comes. Did you understand? Yeah, praise God. Yes, okay. Now, when a person is experiencing, experiencing the grace of God, it is only by his faith. See, grace of God has been given, yes. But just because it has been given. See, God said, um, you have the freedom of choice. That means the grace has been given. But just because the grace has been given, not everyone necessarily are experiencing the grace. Because it's their freedom of choice. They can choose whether they want to experience the grace or not. So a person who is choosing to operate in grace is when he's choosing to believe in the word of God and to operate in faith. Did you understand, Sia? Um, I didn't get the last part, but I understood when you explained um, grace and faith when they are in balance. You can um, receive that, you can position yourself for that miracle. Praise God. Yeah, okay. No, I like I'll explain again. See, Jesus freedom of choice. See, uh, when Adam was born, when, when Adam was created, sorry, he had the freedom of choice, right? Yeah. Yes. Now Adam now whole the human race up till the death of Jesus, the whole human race, okay, Adam chose for them. See, they the whole man, okay, whole of the man. They, by default, had to go to hell. It was not yeah. a choice, heaven or hell. It was definitely hell because of Adam's choice. So everyone, after Adam's disobedience, till the death of Jesus, everyone did not, we, they, we did not have the choice. Man did not have a choice. By default, they had to go to hell. But now what Jesus did was, Jesus died. And because Jesus died, he restored that freedom of choice back to us. And why did, yeah. why did he restore it? Because now it's no longer about one person choosing on the other behalf, but it's about everyone's personal choice. Okay. Now, the grace of God has been given to everyone. Whoever is living on this earth, every person on this earth, God has given grace. Correct? Yeah. So do you believe that God has given grace only to those who are chosen or to everyone? Everyone. Everyone. Now God has given the grace to everyone. But does that mean everyone in the world is experiencing grace? Um, no, because of their faith. Exactly. See, oh, okay. grace of God has been given to everyone. Now you understood. Grace of God has been given to everyone. And that's why I said God has given the grace to everyone, but not necessarily everyone is experiencing it. Why? God has given the grace, yes. But not everyone is experiencing it. See, if there is A and B, A is in the word, B is not in the word. If A says, by the wounds of Jesus, I'm healed, he's using the grace of God, he's believing, and that's why the healing is happening. But what will B do? B will not use the grace. Instead, we will cry and tell God and he will go to the doctor and he will try doing everything else because he has chosen not to walk in grace, but he has chosen to walk in his strength. Okay, because grace, what is grace? Grace is God's will mm. to use his power and his ability. So grace is what? Whose ability? God's ability. Now, when a person is uh, choosing grace, uh, a person... 
that means he's choosing the ability of god instead of his ability now can you say again okay Cho- choosing god instead of his ability yeah i said a and b right a yeah the healing came to a see a and b are healed they let's say they both had covid and they both are healed okay and the reason why they both are healed a said not my strength lord but your grace and he was confessing the scriptures by the wounds of jesus i mean you sent your word and healed my disease he's confessing the scriptures a and he's believing it and that's why he's healed but b b did not do it with the strength of god and with the word of god he did it with his own strength he took the medicine by his strength he went to the doctor by his strength yeah yes now you understood that yeah praise god praise god so did you understand that sian what i was saying yeah i did praise god instead of his ability yeah praise god um yeah because i am asking because um uh someone said like uh grace gets shifted or something but i was confused because the meaning of grace is to use his ability even though i don't deserve it so like i don't do anything i don't say anything but grace just does its does what it's meant to do so that's what i was confused on but you cleared it up because um there has to be my part in it for grace to um how do i like i have to cooperate yeah okay okay i understood what you were saying praise god yeah, yeah. i'll just repeat it for everyone else okay now okay. Uh, according to the grace of god for by grace are you saved through faith now a person who is saved in other words means a person who receives salvation salvation now what is the meaning of that word salvation it's the whole package complete package correct healing deliverance righteousness blessing forgiveness everything included in it now for a person to experience salvation means a person see when he saying the word saved a person to experience what god has done to experience the grace of god now jesus died will jesus come and die for you he is already done see see we we confess the scriptures and now we no longer say by the wounds of jesus i will be healed i will be best or christ will redeem me because it's already been done okay in the old covenant there was no grace see grace is always about what has already been done not is what about going to be done already done now today as jesus has already finished everything on the cross that is the reason why we have grace but for the yeah. before the cross for the people living in the old covenant they were still they, they, they were confessing the scriptures believing that god will do it someday they were not under grace but today we are under grace because of what jesus has already done now the salvation has been given by jesus through grace the grace of god has been given to you god has done his part correct yeah now if we are not experiencing it why is it like that because we have not done our part see for example a person is having a car okay and the the manufacturer has done everything the car is in perfect shape a brand new car car has been in perfect shape. Car, car is there and now he takes it home and uh, after a few days the car stops working you know why guess why he, oh guess he drives it he uses it okay nicely it's brand new still nothing is wrong uh, but suddenly uh, it stops working guess why um i don't know something to do with the engine no Oh, okay. Like <laughs> it's a brand new car, the engine is perfect, everything is perfect, but after few days the car stops working. Why? Very simple answer. It's not tricky. <laughs> um it's not working. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh <laughs> Did I tell you why? 
Is it because he hasn't like turned it on or something? He's turning it on, but it's not becoming on. The ignition is not turning on oh. because of anyone. Fuel. No fuel. When there is no fuel, oh. how can a person expect the car to work? Right? Right. Yeah. Oh, you said fuel? Did you say that? Sorry? Uh, did somebody say fuel as the answer? Why the I said I said yeah, I said fuel. Oh, but I did not hear, I sorry. I did not hear, sorry. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, please call. Correct. Fuel. Because there is no fuel. Okay. Now, when there is no fuel, can a person expect the car to work? No. Now, the manufacturer has done everything for him. He has to do only one thing. What does he need to do? Fill the car. Put up. the fuel. Yeah. Put the fuel. Right? Yeah. Rest everything has been done. That's what God is saying. Grace has been given. Everything has been done. What do we need to do now? Only one thing. You know what is that? Faith. Operate in faith. The grace of God has been given. Everything has been done for us by Jesus on the cross. We only need to do it. We only need to now operate in faith. And when I start believing, I shall receive. See, that's why the Bible says believing and receiving. The Bible does not say receive and believe. The Bible says believe and receive. So today we are believing because the grace has been given. Now we are believing in the word of God and now the grace is manifest. Did you understand? Yes, praise God. I have another question. Um, yeah. Supposing like a person doesn't like act in faith or doesn't say the scripture, but the person just gets a job, like just doesn't do anything, but just gets a job. Is that still grace or like, Okay, see, uh, you, you see, you know, when a person comes to Christ and by, if, if a person, okay, he's not in the word of God, but he's suffering with the sickness and he comes, he just comes for the retreat, he comes, okay, for the word and the preacher prays over him and he receives his healing, okay. Now, is it by his faith or by the preacher's faith? By the preacher's faith. His, the preacher's oh. faith. See, he's yeah. not in the word. He just came uh, asking to pray for him. And by the preacher's faith, he's healed. First time it happened. Second time he comes again with another sickness. Second time also it happens. Third time also he comes with another sickness. Third time it happens. Now, for the fourth time when he comes, will it still happen? No. No. Why no? Um, because, uh, see, like God first, wants, yeah, tell, yes, yeah, um, I may be wrong, but some God wants to see your, like he will do it, but not every time because he wants you, your faith, I guess, like to, he wants your cooperation. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, okay. Uh, the reason why one time, two times it may happen. Okay, three times. The first two or three times it happens because out of the preacher's faith, out of the family's faith or whoever who's praying for him, out of their faith, he's healed. Now, God is that grace? Him. Like the yeah. first three times he's healed? Yeah, because God is showing him his grace, showing him his healing. Now, when he sees that first time, second time that he's healed, now the next question will be, how did you do it? And that's when the person starts preaching and the person starts hearing and that's when he comes to Christ. See, um, let me make it simpler. The first two or three times, it may happen because God wants to show that the word is true. That God wants to show that the word is working. The word is working. It is true. And it is, it is, it is working in your midst. See, uh, I don't know about you, but how my life changed was in the same way. When I had gone to Papa Johnson's retreat and I prayed over this uh, one lady that was there who was having, having neck pain and I think spine problem and something like that. I prayed over her. 
and she got healed. You know why? Because God was trying to show me, see, the word is working. The first two or three times, God, God, the manifestation happens because God is trying to show you that the word is working. But then God will not sh show it to you over and over again. Now he is waiting for you to make the correction, to make the changes and to operate in faith. Did you understand? Yeah, I did. Praise God. Did I confuse you even more? Oh, no, no, no. I got it. Uh, praise God. Yeah, I know. I understood. Yes. So like a couple of times um, it'll work, but God wants to um, see whether you are also taking that step in faith. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. Why will it work for a couple of times? Taking a revision to see whether... Um, mercy? Uh, like... Mercy, okay. To, to show the person that the word is true and the word is working. See, the first two or three times, God wants to show that person the word is true. Because when you're seeing a healing happening by words, you're saying, what is this? It, it persuades you. It attracts you. Correct? Yeah. So the, so the first two or three times, God is trying to show that person the word is true. But it will not happen always. Because then it all depends on whether he is going to put his faith in the word and now see it. Praise God. Praise God. So like in the healing session, um, that grace becomes available because someone spoke in faith. Uh, say that again. That that grace becomes um, available because someone spoke in faith. Yeah, somebody else spoke in faith. Yes. Okay. What about the people who just get jobs? Like who speaks for faith with them? That, that's what I'm saying. It, it can just be like... Oh. Either their family praying for them or maybe God is trying to bring them to the word. Or, or it's not always about the word. See, uh, uh, the people of the world, they receive, the, there are millionaires, billionaires who don't believe in God, right? Yeah. Um. Yes. Yeah, there are millionaires, billionaires who don't believe in God, but they're still prospering. So, so that is called according to the world. See, uh, Many a times I have, I don't want to use this word, but I guess I'll have to use it. it. It can just be a luck. One time, two times you're lucky. And that's why according to the world, you know, that's what the world says. One time, two times. You're so lucky you got in such a nice job. It does not always have to mean if a person is getting in a job, wow, he's anointed. No. And that's why I'm saying there are millionaires, billionaires who don't believe in God. But they're still prospering. That's the world prosperity. It will be here for one day, but it will not be there for every day. It will not be there forever. It will run out. It will go off. See, one time, two times that person can get lucky, but not always. Not always. You see, the best turning point of a person coming to Christ, you know what is the best turning point of a person coming to Christ? When there is a problem. Because when there is a problem, now all these years they they did not even care about god because they had everything see that's what we all the time do most of the time we do we don't care about god because we have prosperity we have success we have good everything then why do we need to care about god that's what i was doing for so long i was not worried about god i am prospering in my studies i'm good at my studies i'm good at i'm getting high marks i don't need god why do i need god okay i'm going to church i'm praying i'm doing the rosary but why else do i need god Right? Yeah. And, and, and that's why they, they, for one or two days, they might see that they are prospering and they are getting in good jobs and that they are getting uh, good, uh, go, everything is good. But it will not last forever. That's what Jesus said. If you leave me, if you don't follow me, Jesus said this, if you don't follow me, then you, see, let me say it like this. Jesus said to his disciples, you know what he said? Today the world will, world will be laughing. But tomorrow the world will be sad. But today you may be upset and discouraged. But it will not always be like that. Tomorrow you'll be happy. What is he trying to say? In this world, a person can have prosperity, success without God. But what will, what will happen after that? He goes to hell. Yes, yeah. Uh, I, I was going to say something else. Praise God. 
I was going to say it won't last. Is what that like what you say? Yeah. See, sometimes, sometimes the person lives a good life, okay, on this whole earth. But sometimes, all throughout their life, they, they live. But then at the end, at the end, they start suffering. And that's when they die. Have you seen that? Yeah. Yeah. It's no, because... because oh, yeah. Sorry. Yes, yes. Yeah, Go continue. Ahead. No, uh, because uh, someone asked me, or uh, like, not asked me, but told me, see, you know, see, and I'm not in the word of God, but see how, you know, I got this job. I didn't use any of the word of God, but I'm, I have this good job and money. So I couldn't really say anything because, yeah, she's doing well. But um, I'm assuming that was the grace of God, but maybe I got it completely wrong. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it can be like how I was saying, maybe uh, God wants to bring him into the world, God, or him or her, whoever it is. God wants to bring that person into the world, showing him that, see, the word is real. You got a job because it is me and to bring him into the world. Yes. Yeah, that's what God did with me. I was sharing when I prayed over that lady, God showed me, see how she got healed. The word is real. The word is working. And that's when I started. I was surprised with that healing. So, so it, it, it can be like God is uh, showing you the grace, okay, so that he wants to bring you into his kingdom to show you that the word is working. But sometimes it can also be just the temporal prosperity. See, I always say this. Um, there is something called temporal prosperity and eternal prosperity. And that's what Jesus also said. But Jesus said it in a different way. Jesus said, those who exalt themselves shall be abased, but those who humble themselves shall be exalted. Now, what I'm trying to say is, those who try to put themselves first by their strength, by their strength, they are temper that is called temporal prosperity. Because they will be in that position, but then they will fall. See, on this earth, and that's what I said, but I'll repeat it once again. On this earth, a person can live such a good life. Okay, without the word, live like a billionaire or a million hair, have everything in abundance. But then once death, what happens? He goes to hell. He goes through eternal fire. Praise the Lord. Can I interrupt? Yeah, this is Alison's prayer. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, Sian, I just wanted to add to this. Okay. I, I understand what you are asking the question is like if a person does not have any word of God in their life, but they do get a good job or they are do prospering in their life, right? Is that correct? Uh, yeah. Yes. yes. I'm so, asking whether you know, is that also grace, but that person is not in like in, the in word. faith. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, in faith. Yeah. So now see, you can't you can't uh, like you know describe it as grace or not because Somewhere maybe that person is having some faith or maybe their family is praying together. We do not know. Yes. Okay. But how I will put this one is like this. See, take for example, okay, you might be studying well in, and you, are, you might be good in the academic. Okay. Without God. Yes. And then you might achieve something in your life. Right. Are you understanding? Can you hear um, me? Yeah. yeah. Um, your voice is a bit low, but yeah. Yeah. One, one minute. Clear now? Oh, I think I got it. Um, you can only accomplish something with your own ability this this much. But if you have, when you operate in faith, um, now you can achieve so, like so much. Is that what it yeah. means? Yes, it is not with your own ability. Are you understanding? So yeah. when you are achieving something with faith, it is not with your own ability. Like, you know, see, now you might be struggling in your life, okay, doing something with your own ability. Like, take, for example, you study hard, you have worked hard for this job, you're working very hard to achieve certain targets in your job, in your workplace, okay, and that, that's how you achieve. But at the end of the day, okay, you are frustrated and tired by doing all those things. You might be, achieve, you, you might be achieving certain levels in your life, okay, but it is a hard work. It is a lot of pain. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Like I give you a small testimony of myself. Yeah. 
I was good in that academics. Okay, I got a job. Okay, I was working. Everything was fine. Okay, everything went well. Okay, but when okay certain time came, okay, I could not pay my bills or you know something like that. Struggled, even though I had a good job, but I could not manage my own finances. So that's the time. Okay, I'm calling to God, and that's the time I'm getting a breakthrough. Okay, which I can't do it with my own ability. So there's a difference. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. Like with the world system, you study hard, you work hard towards it. Like for example, Elliston is studying. Right, he is do- doing well in his academics. But today, okay, as he's studying the word, okay, the academics, you know, even he is not focused on that, but he's getting through. He's getting good marks. He's having higher grades. Did you get me what I'm saying? Yeah, praise God. Yeah. When yeah, you so depend is, on. Yeah, there is two different things. Okay, when you work with faith, okay, it is not your own effort. Like you know, the scripture says, right? You know, you were discussing. For by faith I save through grace, and that not the scripture continues, and that not of yourself, but it is a gift. So both are a gift. You know, grace is a gift, and faith is also a gift, because God is saying, okay, that He's put His faith in in us. Like you have the equal measure of faith, right? So even faith is not of us. Faith is of God. Yeah. yeah. But it's faith. That's my part, isn't it? Yeah, it is about your belief. Yeah. See, you know, yeah. we we are the one who are decision makers. What we want to choose, that is a choice which is given to us. Okay, God has put everything in front of us, but what you want to choose, okay, it is you and I who need to choose. God can't choose on our behalf and say, "Oh, you have to do that." Are you understanding? It's like yeah. when in the Garden of Eden there was a tree. Okay, to eat the fruit was Adam and Eve's choice. God did not make. God has clearly told them not to eat. Okay, but okay, the choice was given to us. Is that clear? Yeah, yeah praise God. Yeah, I yeah. understood. Yeah. 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 So you know, the decision makers are us by believing in faith, even though you know the situation is in front of us. Okay, it does not look like right to us. Okay, but the word of God is saying that is what you have to do. Like trust in the Lord. Like when it comes to money, when it comes to finances, we do not have enough. But God is saying, still sow in the kingdom. So either we will be choosing to sow, or we are saying, okay, that is what is just enough for us, and we want to have that one for ourselves. That is a decision which we need to make, trusting in His word, trusting in in Him. Yeah. Is that is that uh, you know what your question was? Okay, answering your question. Yeah, it was. Yeah, praise God. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was okay, just I'm wondering. Just... Um, yes. Because it is something that I couldn't uh, explain to that person. Yes. Um. Maybe because I didn't know, but yeah, praise God. Yeah. Thanks. Because see, the thing is, okay, even if you try to explain, okay, because he have his own lens of seeing things. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yeah. Thinking? Okay. See, you have a lens, okay, which is the word of God, okay, which he won't agree or she won't agree, okay, but he have a lens of the world. Okay, that he is reaching heights. Okay, as he sees or he is studying. Okay, and as he is achieving those things. But the day, okay, when you say, okay, that even though I was so weak in my studies, I was I could not do this. But today, where I am, okay, take for example, I give you an example. Like you know, after so, so certain years, okay, probably you might have a house, and that person is still in a rented house. For oh, example, okay. yeah? yeah, like you know, after another five years time, you see yourself, okay, where you are, and that person. Okay, maybe you know. For example, okay, that person is still there. I'm not condemning anybody, but I'm just giving an example. Yeah, There's giving no an example using the grace of God, His yes. ability. Yes. Yeah. yeah. In, in His ability, okay, where you stand, okay, and where, okay, you know the you know the one who's saying that I can do it by myself. Today it looks like okay, that person is achieving things. Okay, and you are in the world, and you feel like okay, there's nothing working in your life. But as you go on, okay, and you see after a certain period of time, okay, you see everything is different, you know, and that person is looking at it and saying, okay, oh, I was studying so hard and everything I did was right, but you know, like that person has gone to that level and I'm still here. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Is that clear? Yeah, I got it. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. Praise That's God. clear. Yeah. Praise Thank God. you. Yeah. Yeah. Praise you say. Praise God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Praise. God. So, uh, as I was saying, uh, there are two things: uh, temporal prosperity and eternal one. Uh, 
the temporal prosperity okay a person can be here but one day he will drop to the lowest see i always like to say this um you know why people want to be high who want to why, why they want to have a name because they want to be the lowest because they want to go down <laughs> please god and, and and that's what you know those who humble themselves they want to go up and not like lowering themselves see those who are temporal prosperity they are trying to be see the highest by their pride but they will fall but those who are lowering lowering themselves under humility now they will be exalted but even when they are exalted once they are exalted if they shift to pride at that level of prosperity they will fall but if they continue in humility they will remain there that's the difference you see between saul and david saul began extremely humble saul king saul he became extremely humble but then and and because of that god lifted him up to being a king of israel but then he shifted to pride and that's why he fell and he lost that position of being the king but you see david david lowered himself down and when god lifted him up he was still ready to be humble in that place he did not shift to pride he was still humble praise god and that's what the difference between temporal and eternal prosperity is even if a person is temporarily looking like he will be prosperous forever because he has so much he will fall but those who are humbling themselves they will remain those who are humbling themselves even in that prosperity place they will remain in eternal prosperity yeah praise god yeah i understood praise god yes praise god yeah because the person was asking me um like how is it that how is it that i got this job without the word and see where you are so it was like a difficult thing for me to explain so yeah praise god yeah okay anyone else any questions any doubts god praise god thank you jesus hallelujah okay anyone would like to share anything before we wind up any testimonies anyone stand any testimonies would you like to share praise god um Oh uh, no, I don't have any. Praise God. Okay. Thank you. Praise God. Okay. Uh today we'll pray for those who are suffering with um any type of uh, any type of disease means like uh, any type of like uh, if they if they're suffering with disease of uh, paralysis means where they uh, they're paralyzed or something like that. Okay, we pray for those. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, as you have given us the power, Lord, in our words, we speak to all those people who are suffering with some type of paral paral paralysis or some type of they they are suffering this in their body or they are paralyzed. Their hand or their leg is paralyzed. We uproot it. We curse it. We cast it out of their life. in the name of jesus we bind every spirit that is coming against them and we know so lord that they are healed that they are restored that they are delivered lord they are blessed and we believe that oh lord we believe lord that they are operating in the new life that you have called them to live and lord they are, we believe lord that they are able to move their hand perfectly up and down and all around and their hand or their leg or whatever part of their body is completely healed and they are restored and lord they are no longer under this paralytic a uh, disease or oh lord but they are healed and they are able to move around freely and they are able to go around to speak your word and preach your gospel oh lord thank you lord in jesus name we pray above father amen 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 amen, amen. god okay we'll continue with the ending prayer praise god would anyone like to do the ending prayer cian would you like to do it oh, okay um yeah okay praise god yeah go ahead mm, okay um okay thank you lord thank you jesus for this day thank you lord for this wonderful session 
Thank you, Lord, for blessing and anointing Alliston. I thank you, Jesus, that Alliston has the mind of Christ and the tongue of the learned. I thank you, Lord, for this word that was spoken. Thank you, Jesus, that this word has touched our hearts. And this word in our hearts is what is going to bring that change in our lives, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Wonderful praise, yeah. praise Amen. God. Praise God. Thanks. Okay, we'll pray in tongues. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. So thank you, thank you, everyone. thank you all for joining uh, today's session. Thank you, see and praise God. See you all. Praise God. So class will be same timing, two to three, uh, UK time, uh, six thirty to seven thirty Indian time. Praise God. So thank you, thank you, everyone. Bless you all. Bye. Bye. Bye, Sian. Bye. Bye.